we don't mess anything. But if you haven't heard about the Dover 2030 project, you need to hear about it. And I'm going to bring it up to you. So the Dover 2030 project is a project that has been worked on now. Oh, geez. It's, it hasn't even been a full year or just over a year, not a long period of time. You can see this letter right here was written January 2030, um, as long as I bring that up so you can see it. Uh, January 2023, this was when this letter was drafted, stating, uh, Dear Del or Downtown Dover Partnership board members, after many months of preparation, selection of the most qualified vendors, and a year of plan development, we're pleased to present the Downtown Dover Master Plan Capital City 2030. So if you don't know what any of this means, what it simply means is that Delaware is getting a capital city reface. And they've given some examples of what they want Delaware's capital city to kind of feel like. They're going for, like, the walkable downtown, not as much car traffic, more bikes, scooters, and walking, and – more modern while keeping the historic vibe. We're going to go through this entire report. Um, I was going to show you some some stats on you know Delaware and what's going on in the housing market here, but I, I'm sure less of you care about that. So what I want to go through is the actual document itself. And this was the presentation that was given uh, to the governor. And actually, we did a whole video on it. It's on our channel. You'll see right here, uh, video by Zachary Faust, which if I click on that will bring us to this one. This is on the YouTube channel. So if you want to go watch this video, we're not going to see Over the here. next six and a half oh years gosh. and $500 million. Someone should have told me to get a haircut. All right, I'm sure people did. So <laughs> uh, what we have here, though, uh, that's the video overview of that document. But we have updates, and we have the document up. And I want to go back through it. I want to walk you through some of my favorite things that they're going to be doing to Dover in 2030 and beyond. And I want to hear in the comments what you may think they're doing wrong. I, everyone's got an opinion, but especially the people that live in the area, I want to hear what are they doing wrong? Uh, what are they doing right? What's being done that you feel could be done better? And what's being done that you feel needs to keep being done for the sake of getting better? Uh, we're not a bad area. We're a very solid area. We're a growing area, and the average price point yields that of, a, of well over 300000 it's not a impoverished area, but downtown Dover specifically has struggled in past decades to garner traffic late at night, to get people out there for entertainment, bar scene, restaurant scene. It just no one's really been able to lock in and create a super successful business in the area. And that's now why the city and the state are stepping in to create an absolute overhaul of how Dover's viewed so that when it is viewed, it's viewed in a better light. It's viewed in a light of, oh my gosh, this is this is a beautiful area with big, long sidewalks and lots of cool areas. And I don't want to go too deep into it. I want to want to go into this. So this is the letter. Like I said, Dear Downtown Dover Partnership members, after months of preparation, selection, and most qualified vendors, a year of planning this development, we're pleased to present Downtown Dover Master Plan and wait until you see the CGI workups from some of the engineering that was done. It's beautiful baffling how good it looks this is what they're going for guys transforming downtown dover capital city 2030 now right here you'll see if you if you go to where my cursor's at this is lockerman street all right this is lockerman street going straight up and through all the way past the train track and out to forest avenue right around here state street exchange and that's where we're sitting right now loft hi that's where we're sitting at this exact moment. And as you can see, everything pretty much that's in color is something that's a part of this plan. So we have everything from an open park place. We have a whole like lakefront dome for music and festivals. I want to get into that. There's a baseball stadium involved with this, grocery stores, hotel, apartment. Con I don't know. I'll we'll have to look. This is a cool document, and it goes into detail on everything. This talks about everybody that was involved, the Mosaic Project, Bernardin, uh, Bernardin uh, the Downtown Dover Partnership, Kimberly Horn, all that. Shows some pictures from some meetings. We actually hosted one of the updated meetings just recently on the Downtown Dover Partnerships 2030 project. And I want to go into these key findings from the interview. So they interviewed people from the local area, and here's what they found were the biggest issues with Dover. Lack of pedestrian traffic to support businesses. Strong demand for more amenities downtown. 
demand for more qua- demand demand for more quality housing and greater density downtown love that physical condition of the infrastructure burdens business and property owners and large concern for safety and reducing vagrancy and homelessness homelessness definitely been a problem here are the key findings on what they want to do uh being but basically what they've identified as some of the issues that are causing this there are no financial incentives to spur investment from the private market regional anchors are not well connected to the downtown very few businesses downtown to attract people here anyway and the current housing stock is not supportive to retain that retail and the streetscapes the cosmetics the sidewalks the trees it's not pretty i i think all those coincide if we could just simply get more people walking on the sidewalks it would increase the likelihood that the homeless problem more dissipates we need restaurants we need shops we need places that people want to go in order to create that and that's what i think we're looking to create here in this 2030 project i'm going to skip over a few things and walk into some of my favorite parts of this document here is the projected plan outcomes you can see they have 15 acres that they want to develop uh with over 10 different parcels 927 new residential units i know that does include uh single family homes as well as apartments above commercial space condos it includes a lot Twenty-seven thousand square feet of grocery store i got to meet the guy who's going to be doing that super swell guy and if it's not on here but they're also redoing the old post office into what's now going to be called the post and it's going to be a restaurant front facing like coffee shop and that's going to have living space and parking in the back love the whole plan speaking of parking over 792 parking spaces set in oh close to a hundred thousand in commercial space in square footage and in total a 500 million dollar project i love it there's a few things i'm not rocking with that i'll get into i've gone through this document a couple times i do love the linear square feet or the linear feet of Lockerman Street getting utilized. What they mean by that is they want to have more people sitting, dining, drinking, enjoying themselves, biking, walking, taking a stroll down the street of Lockerman than there is now, which is basically none. Uh, and keep State Street the main street for transit. Lockerman is the spine of this this whole transition. All right. So let me make sure I'm still good over there. Yes, man, we are good. All right, so vibrancy, let's keep moving. Beautiful. Here's a sign that they want right near the train track. I love this. It's a big Dover sign. It kind of has that Philly love sign vibe. Kind of, you know, you know what I'm talking about? I like it. I think Dover doesn't really have a, uh, a monument. And in this document, I think there's three. One of which was like, whoa. And the other, I'm just like, I don't know if we want that. But here's kind of a map of where it looks like. We got more maps to kind of break it down even further. Let's uh, let's look at those. I want to uh, show this part right here on State and Lockerman Street. They want to have an area of this uh, where this basically street is right now cut off for more foot traffic availability, ease of walking over there. I know that's going to be a great move. It's a weird street already right there. I think that's a good move. Uh, in doing so, they're hoping that's one of the main moves. It'll create this new Lockerman State Exchange where I'll be the first to tell you, I think it's official that we're going to be getting within the next year at the state uh, Lockerman State Exchange, someone finally in that building, and it's more than likely going to be a food court. And I'm really excited by that. I think that's a great move. I really think that having food and a place for the people who already work in this area to have an option to go down and walk and eat and stay there for lunch, great option. Let's look at parking. They're looking to add several parking spots, and this lays out where they're going to be at. 325 on Governor's Ave, 198 on Railroad. I'm sorry, 315 on Governor's Ave, 129. About 200 on Railroad Ave, another 135 on Governors, 55 on Lockerman, 43 on Old City Hall, and 36 on Lockerman and Queen Street. Going into Lockerman Revised, you can see here what they mean by having these streets be an area where people want to hang out. They're going to widen the sidewalks and shrink the actual streets. That is a very common move in downtowns that have become this nice bar hoppy, artsy, hangout town. Uh, so I think that's a great move. Architecture. They're looking to keep the historic look 
while while bringing it up and modernizing it. And here you'll see something that as you enter through Lockerman Street in the downtown Dover, you'll notice a change to the scape because you'll see a giant building that's set to actually uh, more than likely be a apartment complex slash condo. I'm not 100% sure, but you could see just from the design, super modern while fitting in with the old school 1700s, 1800s buildings that exist in Dover. So a need for greater density. Findings. Key finding from our research in downtown Dover is that it lacks a density to support amenities requested. Solution. Add over 2,000 new residents, focus on residents with disposable income, and draw from key air or draw from our key areas, Bay Health, Delaware State Government, Delaware State University, and the Dover Air Force Base. As a real estate agent, that makes complete sense. Those are four different items: health, the state government, our colleges, and the Air Force Base that bring in people. So focusing on those areas makes a lot of sense. Now, when you talk about focusing on disposable income and then you immediately start talking about government workers, the military, and college students, I don't know if those two things coincide. Getting into the potential project sites, you'll see in the red where they have some big shifts planned. You'll see 11 out here. Uh, that's going to be right where that uh, river, lake, pond, uh, Riverside. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm incorrect here. That 11 is going to be the former post office. My apologies. The former post office turned into the post. Out here at number 12, not in red, a little tricky, is where that is going to be, that little concert area. Number 10 is where we just saw that nice modernized apartment complex area. Um, I'll zoom in just a tad bit. Uh, nine is the Lockerman State Street Exchange. Seven, four, six, and two all falling right on Lockerman Street. Some on New Street, some on Governor's. Let's get into the specifics of what these look like. This is supposed to be on Governor's Street. We got more residential living going up, which I think is very smart, and grocery. Hopefully some Whole Foods. Hopefully some updated, some healthy. We're looking at a parking lot, two-story parking garage with over 113 spaces, a grocery store itself of over 27,000 square feet, and 196 residential units on top. I don't see any downside to this. Do you see a downside to a building that looks this nice? And and frankly, I mean, there's a lot of people hanging out in this picture outside the grocery store. I don't know if the grocery store is going to be that popping of a place, but I think that would fit in beautifully. I think it would add more vibrance to that area. And, of course, we need more people living in the area to, to increase – the fun stuff. So here's another angle from another building, again on Governor's Avenue, with more up top living. Right here we have on 136, 132, 130, and 124 Bradford, as well as some parcels on Governor's. 146 units, commercial space, and we have some transit space in there as well for, it uh, looks like we have, let's read around. Uh, around steel decking doesn't say what's going to be the transit public parking deck surface parking so lots of parking that's good and then a residential support lobby amenities all 3100 square feet love that let's keep moving lockerman way plaza this is right like i said on the spine of where this whole project is in dover it's right on lockerman street this is as you can see from the red a deep project takes up the entire width of the block from Lockerman. We have over 80,000 square feet in residential, 88 units on one building, and then the other building boasting 56 units. We have parking on the ground floor, total of 55 spaces. Outdoor amenities on a rooftop. Love the rooftop spot. That's great. That's, that's what we need. That's what Dover needs. And I love this project because it's attacking exactly what's needed in Dover. Let's keep moving forward. Memorial Park. We're talking food trucks, and we're talking – what? let me go through all this. Courtyard, amphitheater, open space for games. Look at all – got a big open space over here that's not utilized now. It needs to be utilized, so I love that. An art walk. Don't even know what that is. A bridge installed and potentially shutting off one of these roads. This is a big underrated part of this project that I'd be so excited to see happen. The, the, just the food trucks lining up at every lunch – is a simple thing that I want, uh, and this would bring that. It would bring a riverfront amphitheater that would bring music and energy to the area, absolutely underutilized. You could see some pictures of what they're hoping to get. Basketball courts, walks down the riverside. It doesn't look that that voluptuous in the river. It's a very thin 
but I, I can't get enough of this, and I really hope they move on this first, if not with priority, because that would be a quick, easy way to bring energy and just people into the area. So going down from there, more key strategies. Again, you can get this document by uh, Googling Dover 2030 Project. Uh, these are some of the things that are already in the Dover area, Bay Health, the Delaware State Government buildings, Delaware State University just bought out Wesley there and took over a lot of their buildings, and Dover Air Force Base is just outside of downtown Dover. All right, so new community uses. Here's some of the things that they're hoping to bring into the area. I'll just kind of rattle them off real quick. Grocery store, food hall, pet store, cafe, farmer's market, microbrewery, sports bar, bicycles, and more. I've heard that means electric scooters. Hoping for that. Boutiques, laundromats, daycares, nail salons and cares, cigar shops, retail clothing, boutique food, meaning ice creams, pretzels, candy shops, meats, butchers, chocolate, yogurt, tacos, and burgers. Tech and iPhone stores, or tech and phone stores, but I guess iPhone. UPS, FedEx, co-working spaces, workforce training centers, and recreation and entertainment such as mini golf, ice skating, park equipment, and sports. All of that, to me, with exception of a couple, all sound like things that would immediately bring value. I would like to see maybe a little bit of a more quicker move on the food side of things. I, I did mention earlier food hall coming Lockerman State Exchange, and you'll see the second thing I brought up was food hall. It says, this food hall will bring together various chef-crafted meals of different cuisines featuring the area's best chefs. It's going to be the great food trucks as a carryout option or delivered to you. So I love that option, especially being local in Dover, having the walk and or, hey, just bring it to me. That's great. And with most of these items, too, you're getting the opportunity to have more people frequenting the area. I don't know if we need as much UPS and FedEx. I don't know if we need as many uh, pet stores. And we have some microbrew areas and sports bars outside of here. Maybe we don't need that right away, but I understand the want for it. We're almost done this document. Stick with me. Zoning and permitting, that's boring. Financial recommendations, that's boring. Let's keep on looking through. We're getting to the end of this document. Oh, that's the end. All right. So looking through some of those boring financial recommendations, uh, they are going through investment from the state and from the country even, uh, looking for ways to receive funding similar to that of Newcastle, Wilmington, and other downtowns that have received funding like for projects that we're looking at here. Uh, and Dover really hasn't received a lot of that money over the past decade. So this is the plan that's been put forth. And even the video we made earlier on it, which if you want to go watch it, just Google Dover 2030, and then you can Google my name, Zachary Faust or Loft, and you'll find it. And that video has actually been used to help pitch more investors to invest in Dover for this 2030 Capital City project. So I'm curious to know, especially in the comments, leave them below and I'll be able to review them all afterwards and go through and engage. And I'd happily want to see... Or I'd happily want to know and read through what your thoughts are. What is Dover doing that's right? What do you think they're doing that maybe isn't so right? And do you think this project is the right project to get Dover to grow at the pace that we want? Which, frankly, no one really knows what that pace quite is. What do you think? I'm anxious to hear your answers. Thank you for jumping into the live, and we'll be doing this once a week, so feel free to jump in next week, jumping into more of what's happening in Delaware. Talk to you soon.